the development of Catholic Church doctrine, I don't think it's what people believe it is, uh, particularly those looking from the outside. The development of Catholic doctrine, or dogma, you know, from the very humble beginnings of Christianity to things like papal infallibility, etc. This development was not religious, it was scientific. And now that's going to really annoy a lot of Protestants. But the fact of the matter is, interestingly enough, for those in the know, the Catholic Church has always been annoyed whenever people in the church start questioning this, start questioning that. That's why they'd like, this is something you may not know, but they, that's one of the reasons they liked to isolate holy people. Not because they hated them or because there was some jealousy or anything like that, because they knew if they spoke loud enough that everybody would start asking very intelligent questions and Christianity would become more about pure theology as opposed to pure spirituality and that's never where the church has wanted to, to be you cannot <laughs> it doesn't matter what age you go to it doesn't matter how corrupt a bishop may have been even the corrupt bishops all had that original sense of Christianity they just wanted to cherish a simple mode of worship and helping the true Christian spirit. That's why, interestingly, the church throughout two, for, two, for 2,000 years has, well, I should say almost 2,000 years, has sort of oscillated back to its beginnings. It always wants to go back to its beginnings because that's, you can't beat Christ's message and his, the way he started the church. It's God speaking. So it's, <laughs> the church always goes back to early Christianity one way or another. It happened so many times and it's now happening it's even transcending the digital world. It's it's that powerful, Christ's message. So the church and all its people have always wanted that message to go back to its humble beginnings. They've always wanted uh, an early Christianity, an early form of Christianity. And uh, it is silly to think that the Catholic Church has come out of the blue over the last 2,000 years and just tried to invent something new for propaganda or for something silly when it's absolutely quite opposite the case. Uh, things like the Immaculate Conception, things like uh, Purgatory, these were questions asked for a 1,000 years, if not longer, that were never fully clarified because the church didn't want to but when enough when there was so much obscurity and interest going around the church had to address it in much the same way police have to address a community problem if it gets out of hand too much eventually they're going to have to make a law eventually they're going to have to make something clear uh, to their reluctance usually because they nearly every copper will always tell you they like things the way it's always been and really don't like unnecessary change and the church is the pure example of that. It's much bigger than a police force, the church, uh, and much more important. Uh, it's the police force of our souls, but not in, hopefully you don't think of it as an, uh, in that way. <laughs> but that would truly be horrifying for Protestants. Oh, I told you! Policing people's souls. <laughs> that's just, uh, that's truly uh, Roman catholic -y, isn't it? But... You get my point. It's it, it protect it, the church is there to nurture our souls, protect our souls, help our souls. Not that not the type of bad policing, Jesus Christ. But it's the purest example. It's the purest purest example thereof. And it's not the church who instigated all these dogmas. It's the church who patiently inquired over even a thousand years. They didn't answer the question of the Holy Mother of God. For at least a thousand years they hit it from every angle they looked at every form of logic they wondered why this wasn't so in the bible why don't we hear what happened to her they looked at actual tradition and what the early christians said about the holy mother um so there's a lot of there have been a lot of uh developments in the catholic church over its history that they didn't instigate, they had, they, they had to make a response to, and because of that, you then had other places, other people in Europe, usually jealous kings, 
So I told you, they're just coming out with new ideas. It's just blah, blah, blah. When they were actually usually, when they were almost always the ones behind the propaganda going around. So the church had to respond to something, which would make it look like that. They're fucking cheeky, the English kings. And things like purgatory. That's classic for people who don't understand what it is to say, that's just catholic -y. But, you know, now that I've looked at uh, universal recurrence, it's pretty obvious that every, every denomination of Christianity is fundamentally flawed because they reject purgatory. Because it's actually a fact of the universe. It, 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 sorry, I should say, I don't know it's a fact of the universe yet. I should say it's almost really an absolute fact of the universe and um the catholic church defends purgatory like no tomorrow because of all its inquiry over the ages and all the logic behind it all the bright doctors of the church who patiently studied it and said no this is definitely what it is okay they're asking questions about what happens if the soul does this it must do this it has to there's it there is no other answer and then the church would adopt it because the church would believe wholly that these people were inspired by God because they had dedicated their entire life to the, that study. In just the same way you'd call uh, leading scientists wholly today because they dedicate their entire life to a line of science and you'd take their word for it because you just know them. It was the same thing with the church. The church weren't, as, weren't monstrous. This was just classical Northern European, or I should say really English, politicking and you know, sheer jealousy. Uh, they were just mad. They were bent on disrupting the church and, and you know, removing Roman power, which you know, sort of backfired miserably in ways they could never conceive because today that resulted in the EU. If you look at the way history repeats itself or the way history works, the, e, the European Union is a direct result of the Protestant Reformation. Uh, I know that's 500 years ago, but when you look at all the mechanics, uh, that's the result. So... The EU to, Br to Brit modern Britain is a trillion times worse than what the Catholic Church could have ever been to them. And they'd done that all on their own because an English king, you know, lost his marbles. <laughs> it's funny how history does that, isn't it? But it's just the fact of the matter that the Catholic Church is the only church, from what I know, that teaches purgatory as a matter of, yeah, you know, that's exactly what happens. Purgatory is not something you reject, not something you can say, nah, it doesn't happen. It happens. That's the Catholic teaching. That's what we believe. And to look at universal recurrence, not only is that just another name for purgatory, it means the universe's name is perhaps in, not incorrect. We can actually change. You wouldn't be wrong for changing the title universe to purgatory. That's the that's the ramifications of Catholic teaching. It wouldn't be wrong because of what the universe does. And as I've been stating, and as the Catholic Church has always stated, we don't necessarily believe that God is some fairy godfather in the sky floating. God is just another name for creatory or the creator spirit or this or what we know as the Big Bang it's, it, or what we know as a singularity. We we can't be certain. We can be certain that God exists, but that's just the name we ascribe him. Deus, God, Lord, Dominus, Dominus Deum, uh, <laughs> Dominus Deus, all these Latin and English uh, names, and they're things we ascribe God. But God as he is doesn't have a name, he just is. Just acts, just bees, just is. And uh, that's... That's the church's teaching. That's it. It's fully scientific. The church has always looked into scientific teaching. So when you look into St. Thomas Aquinas, you might see questions of angelic beings and things like that. But what you're not grasping is that those words don't represent floating fairy people. It represents what we speak today or refer to as the intergalactic realm, out of space, what could be there. Okay, St. Thomas Aquinas made it very clear. Of course there are fucking angelic beings of all types of fucking classes. But angelic doesn't mean what you think it means just because it's been portrayed as something floating or something cartoonish. What he means is there's 
extraterrestrial life. Okay, it's that simple. And today, what do science deduct? There has to be, there must be due to probability and other factors uh, and statistical mechanics. There has to be life outside our galaxy. It has to be, it has to be. And so Thomas Aquinas already answered that. And he gave them classes, he gave them ranks, he gave them all types of things because he thought about it very deep in terms of what everybody's role in this universe is in, the, in God's greater plan, which is, again, just the figure for the Big Bang or the singularity. The church, the church has never been anything but scientific. Just remember that scholasticism, that uh, a lot of what St. Thomas Aquinas did is the reason that universities do what they do today. Uh, let that sink in. Everything that we do, everything that modern science does is pretty much the product of the Catholic Church. Full credit goes to the Arabs because there was they have they played a major role in the retention of classical uh, European literature and traditions and knowledge and all that sort of stuff. But when push comes to shove, the Renaissance, the Enlightenment, everything is just was almost entirely a product of the Catholic Church. If you to think anything else, you are grossly incorrect. It was Definitely, absolutely not a product of the English. Oh my God. It's because they concocted a royal society at the same time. You've got to be out of your fucking mind to believe that. The the impetus for a scientific revolution started around the time of the Knights of the Saint, Knights of St. John. It was just a bright idea of how to do things new. And hospital science began, started to evolve. Hence hospitalers. They started... Uh, taking care of pilgrims and all sorts of people in different ways that no one else has in history and then all of a sudden 100 200 years later st thomas aquinas pops up and forms or scholasticism was already formed i should say but he he refined it he refined the way to treat subjects he was highly prioritized st thomas aquinas no there was no scholar like him he was just brilliant you could not outsmart st thomas he <laughs> I read his writings and I know exactly what he's doing and it's something to behold. It's something that people don't even do today. He's that far ahead of his time that I don't think... It'll be another thousand or two thousand years before everybody's like him. He is way ahead of his time, St. Thomas. And the church just knew not to fuck with him and just let Thomas be. And he came up with rippers. He saved the church... Well, in many ways, he saved the church at the right time from heresy, from just falling apart and all sorts of crap. He was that brilliant, St. Thomas. And then after St. Thomas, that refinement of uh, scholasticism turned into universitas, university, what we know as university. And all of a sudden, all the Latin Europeans were attending universities, were attending uh, real universities, the Latin way, and science was flourishing. And science was flourishing, especially, especially in Italy. It's Italy that was the founder, or that was the start. Well, I should say, it's Italy. Italy itself that is responsible for the Enlightenment and scientific revolution. It's not. It wasn't the Knights of Saint John responsible for it, although they had major impetus and a major role in it. It's fully the brainchild of the Italians. They are the ones who started the. Well, they are the ones responsible wholesale for that age of enlightenment. They were enlightened people, and they still are. The Italians will forever be thanked and. Uh, honoured for that role, just as they brought about Rome. Just as they brought about Rome, they brought about the scientific revolution. No one else did that. And everybody contributed to it. Many Europeans started revolving around centres in Italy and, you know, brandishing their contribution or what they have to offer, and that's not taken away from them. Many great things came from other countries in Europe, but it really was the brainchild, the, the, the whole scientific revolution, all the industrial revolutions that followed really came from that enlightened thinking that came from your da Vinci's, Michelangelo's, Volta, and so forth. It just went boom. All of a sudden, science was alive, as it should be. And it's... The church and science are one and the same, are the same thing. You can't take away the church. You, you can't take away science from the church. It's the fucking same thing, and people need to understand that. So I'm not have, I'm not going to have a go at Church of Scientology for a second. I've got nothing against them, but it it's funny when they say that because in a way, the Catholic Church is 
exactly that. It's, it, Catholic Church doesn't take a position against science. Everything it's always done is scientific. It was, and in many ways, it, it was the impetus that had the Italians start the uh, scientific revolution. Now, you may point to Galileo and other things in the Catholic Church saying, no, you're heretics, but no, 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 no. That's... That, very, that is deception at its greatest. That was an isolated incident, but at whole, the church was moving in the direction of science. And for for the church, they moved in that direction because they knew that science, that everything they started to discover was God's signature. They just knew it. They knew exactly what was inevitable and that looking hard enough, it would answer all their questions. At the end of the tunnel, it's pretty clear that there's no doubt whatsoever that God exists. It's just our perception of what God is that may differ. Um, some people want to believe that God's on a fucking throne in some other universe and giving commands. That's just a very warped sense of your reality and what you've been uh, trained or conditioned into. It doesn't matter what God is or what he, what he isn't. The fact is that it is. God definitely exists. And it's how we perceive that reality. And for me, at least, it's the singularity. It's the Big Bang. It's the universe being the product. And that's it. That's, that's what we call God. So I, I think people who form ideas of against the Catholic Church who have never uh, had any knowledge of the Catholic Church should really, really think twice. Should, they should think very, very carefully, very, very carefully. I mean, look at biology, for instance. Mendel, uh, European monk, a Catholic monk. He's, to some extent, the father of modern biology. Uh, if you look at the father of Maltese history, Giovanni Abela, uh, he, in, to some extent, his methods is the father. He's the father of modern history, along with maybe some other historians. Uh, the way that history history is now treated scientifically prior to him like with Pliny and going back all the way to Rome and so forth they they, they documented but they used the, they used slightly similar methods primary sources secondary sources reliability blah 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 but they didn't have the same scientific rigor that started to become promoted in the middle ages and Giovanni Abela whose coin I keep in my pocket, he promoted, uh, he sort of gave the impetus for archaeology, for the scientific, his, uh, for the scientific undertaking of history. He didn't want you to just say, yeah, that's what was written about him, so let's believe it. He wanted you to dig the ground. He wanted you to analyse things, classify things, make links. Uh, not say something is a fact until it's absolutely certain without no shadow of doubt that it's a fact because you know, writing about something and seeing something is just not enough and it was and what was he you could say a prince of the Catholic Church he was the uh, vice chancellor of the Knights of St. John and that was in the early 1600s so all of these world uh, changing events started in the Catholic Church and it, in their private journals and many of them they attest to what I'm saying that the Catholic Church has always responded accordingly to the greater needs of Christians especially when they all start asking questions about things that may trouble them or trouble their faith and that's why the Church comes out with doctrine so you can think how you will with that, but I'll let you chew on it.